All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So I just had to sit down here and make a video talking about this past week playing games because it has been absolutely amazing. Three games that I have absolutely loved have come out back to back this week. It's definitely been my highlight of the year by far, if not the past several years in terms of being excited to be playing games that I absolutely love in such a close time frame. So I figured I would sit down here and make a video giving you my impressions for the three games that are consuming my time as of right now, being Armored Core 6, Sea of Stars, and of course, Starfield. Now, I'm going to timestamp each of the games, so if there's a certain game that you don't care about hearing, just check the timestamps and you know you can skip right to that also i wanted to just quickly before we get into the talking about the games i also wanted to thank you guys for an amazing week of youtube in general i hope you guys have been enjoying my near daily uploads at this point i've felt this new reinvigorated sense of content creation for youtube that i have not felt in quite a bit so i hope you've been enjoying my passion for the topics that i cover and uploading videos and thank you for all of your positive feedback um, i am reading all of your comments i may not you know be able to reply to everybody but i am reading thank you for all of your likes your comments and just general feedback and especially those of you that have been coming into my streams and also showing your support and kind messages there as well so thank you very much but let's start with Armored Core 6. Now, I will tell you guys, I'm actually recording. I'm like so deep into this YouTube video thing right now, you know, making videos again. I'm actually recording this at 4 a.m. so that I can get this video out for you guys for tomorrow morning so that I can keep up with this daily upload schedule that I've got going on here. So don't mind me. I might seem a little bit tired. That's because I kind of am. I actually just got off of playing Starfield, but that kind of hyped me up a bit. So there's not going to be any gameplay. This I'm just going to be giving you my thoughts, and feel free to listen to this. Treat it as a podcast, if you will, like a mini little podcast. If anything, I think showing gameplay for stuff, especially like Starfield, will spoil you anyway. I actually caught a little bit of trailer that was shown in another video that I didn't want to see, and it kind of spoiled an environment in the game that I hadn't seen before. So in a way, not having gameplay might actually be better for you. So... Let's start with Armored Core 6. My experience with the Armored Core series has really only been Armored Core 3, which I played about a month or two ago. And I wasn't... I appreciated Armored Core 3. I liked what sort of made that series different from other mech games in terms of like outfitting your mechs with different weapons, different armor and parts, and kind of going into these mini missions, and you know, enjoying the difficulty, enjoying the atmosphere, enjoying the music, and just the general sense of, uh, you know building up your mech through the course of the game. I, I liked it, but I wasn't in love with it. That was the only one I'd really played from the series. So I went into Armored Core 6 not expecting to fall in love with this game. And boy, was I wrong, because I love Armored Core 6. So I am about 14 hours into the game right now. And before we get into anything, I know some of you, a lot of you have actually played Armored Core 6. So let me just get a couple of things out of the way, because you're probably going to be wondering. Tutorial boss, beat it first try. Uh, chapter 1 boss, Balius, beat it within 30 minutes. I did struggle quite heavily on the Sea Spider. I was on that for about an hour and a half or so, and I haven't had really much trouble with any bosses since then. Okay, so let, let me get that out of the way, just so you know, you know. That's one of the first things everybody asks. How did you do against this boss? How'd you do against that, that boss? But that's what I love about Armored Core 6. The builds that you use in this game uh, are not set in stone. You can kind of outfit your mech any way you want, but this is not a game that you can play your way. This is a game that you have to play the way the game wants you to play it sometimes. So if you're getting stuck on a boss for hours, you need to change up your mech and you need to change up the weapons and the armor perhaps. You cannot get comfortable in this game and I actually like that. Get you out of your comfort zone. So I started the game saying, okay, I'm going to just use a melee weapon and I'm going to use a, a gun in my offhand and that doesn't work for every level. And I came to a boss that really just demolished me and then I found the proper build for it and I beat it the first try that I changed my, my loadout. So, in terms of customization, I find this a lot nicer than Armored Core 3 for some reason. I think it's just the general sense of the UI. It's in HD, the screen is a wide screen, so I can see the loadout screen a lot easier, all the stats. It's not as overwhelming as I actually thought it would be, and I'm actually really enjoying all the stats and micromanagement and outfitting of my mech. Armored Core 3, I was a little intimidated by it, but I think that was the 4x3 aspect. You don't get to see all the stats on the screen at once, whereas Armored Core 6, it just lays it all out there for you nice and easy. Visually, this game is a treat. I am blown away by the visuals of Armored Core 6 at times. Yes, at moments, it doesn't really feel like a cutting-edge PS5 kind of 
you know, a Series X high-end PC kind of game. But when it does, boy, does it look good. The sense of scale in some of these levels and the way that you kind of move through them look amazing at times. And boy, is the movement good. I knew I fell in love with Armored Core 6 the second that I got into that tutorial and I started boosting around, zigzag and going every which way, but I felt like I was fully in control. The boosting in this game is probably the best boosting I've ever felt in a video game, period. And when you master the controls and you're holding the controller, you know, crab gripping this thing every little which way because you have to play this game pretty intensely, you're pretty much using every button and then some on this controller to play this game because you got weapons mapped to every button, every, every button does something on this controller, but once you master it, my goodness, is it a satisfying game. You're zipping around, you're melee slashing one enemy, and then you're quickly throwing some homing missiles into the other enemies on the other side of the screen. All the while, you got this epic film score-esque, techno, uh, beat-driven, sort of like, you know, PS2 era soundtrack going on in the background that just sounds like it's out of a Blade Runner movie or something. I mean, man, do you get into this. It, get my, it got my heart rate going on a lot of the boss battles and a lot of the more intense missions. And speaking of the missions, they are super punctual and perfect. I love how short these missions are. It can be a mission that's a minute, two minutes. It can be a mission that takes you 20, 30 minutes. But I love that each mission has its own little small goal. You might get ambushed. They might throw a wrench into your plan. But I love that this From Software was not afraid to keep Armored Core what it has been for fans, where it's just short missions challenging missions some of them are a little worse than others but i like that they didn't make this some kind of souls game you know i didn't want to mention that word while talking about armored core 6 but i love that it sticks to its roots the story is minimal you know forget the story the story is barely even there there's a cutscene here or there there's text boxes that pop up i barely even pay attention to it because at the end of the day i'm having an absolute blast just blowing up mechs and speaking of blowing up mechs i went online with this game and let me tell you at first i hated it I went online, I ended up in this map that was like Final Destination from Smash Brothers, where it was just a, a small little arena, there was no blockades, no, no cover. I got absolutely demolished. I didn't even get a single kill. I don't even think I hit a single person with my sword the whole game. But then I was like, you know, let's try this one more time. You know, the next time I played it, I was like, let's give it one more go. I chose a map all the way on the bottom of the list. It's in a city with a bunch of cover. It's a big open map. So in a 3v3 scenario, it gives you some breathing room to take cover. I changed up my loadout a little bit, and my it just clicked. Suddenly, um, the top of my team, you know, I'm getting, I think the highest points I've had in an online match was like 1,400, 1,400 points, just changing up my weapon loadout, seeing what works best, and man, when it clicks, it freaking clicks. This is one of the best online, frantic online multiplayer games I've played in a while. And it's just so intense going up against other players. But the thing I think that's going to hold it back in the online mode is the fact that there's no reason to play it other than it's fun. Shadowrun on the Xbox 360 back in the day had a similar issue. I love the game, but there's no ranking. There's no nothing. You don't get any rewards. It's just literally you get on, you play, and then that is it. Rinse and repeat. There's no, no You get nothing other than the satisfaction of defeating your opponents and having fun. So I think that's going to hold it back a little bit. Um, hopefully that gives you a broad general sense. I, I'm getting very hyped up over Armored Core 6 because I'm definitely very much loving the game. And I can't wait to jump back into it and play a bit more online and, you know, finish up the single player. Amazing game. So glad I gave it a try. I was very on the fence about it considering my experience with Armored Core 3. Let's jump in to Sea of Stars, which has also blown me away. I didn't play the demo for Sea of Stars and, uh, you know, I don't typically play a lot of demos for games that I will try out these days. And Sea of Stars is a game that I did download for free on PlayStation Plus Extra. So, you didn't have to pay for it, even though I'm playing, paying for PlayStation Plus. This is one of the best RPGs I think I've played in years. I was not expecting this, because I am very picky with pixel-based RPGs that try to feel like the classics. They just, some of them just never seem to get certain things right. The graphics are either unappealing to me. There's just always something wrong with it. The music is not that great. Um, something about it. There's always something. It feels like it's trying too hard. You know, you got a lot of these RPGs now taking the HD 2D style. Um, you know, like, uh, 
Octopath Traveler. You know, I'm not like saying any of these games are bad or anything, or you know, the upcoming Dragon Quest V from Square Enix that's going to be, or three, sorry, I forget which one they're doing, where it's going to try and make it look like an old 2D look, but in the new 3D style. You know, that's fine. I think those games look cool and all, but I do think that style will get tiresome after a while. And let me tell you, I think the pixel graphics in Sea of Stars are going to stand the test of time. This is potentially the best looking game I have played with pixel art graphics ever. I, these are these are strong words. I'm just going through my mind thinking like all these games I've played in recent years with these modern pixel games. This might be the best one. These graphics are unreal. They the developers are uh, Sabotage Studios, I believe their name is. They made the Messenger, and the Messenger was a great looking game. But this is just this blows it out of the water. The way that they use these pixel graphics and the way that they kind of bend the shadows around in the time of day. And the way that they skew the camera angle and kind of work with the lighting makes this game look 3D. It makes it look like it is a HD 2D game when it isn't. The level of detail in these levels with the pixels swaying, the tree swaying, the grass swaying, the little details like little seagulls kind of like flying off onto the rocks in the middle of a battle as you're doing battle. Just little things like that go so far. And even though you're moving through environments that are very basic, very straightforward, it might be a linear path with one little branching dead end with a chest, They, even though these environments are super simple, which also harkens back to what this game is heavily based on, which is games like Chrono Trigger, I also get Super Mario RPG vibes from this quite heavy, heavily, and you know the Mario and Luigi games. Despite the environments being quite simple at times, the graphics just make it feel much more grand and bigger and better than actually what it really is you're essentially just going through straight corridors with square box rooms but the graphics really make it feel like you're going through some big grand triple a 3d rpg so now that we've gotten the sort of like amazing graphics out of the way the gameplay is yes it is like a chrono trigger game but oh my goodness the way that they pair the timing based system that moonerang move so there's a move in this game where one of the characters will throw a boomerang and you have to time it it's like you know, the, the jump that you do in Super Mario RPG where you can just keep jumping with Mario, but it's a boomerang that's going back and forth. But based on the placement of the enemies on screen, you the timing changes as the distance of all the enemies changes. So as it comes back to you, this enemy might be closer, this one's really far away. So the timing, and then the more you hit it, the more damage it does. Um, and then you got other moves with timing-based attacks. But then it all starts clicking when you realize that they have a couple more little intricate things into the, the gameplay system in terms of like weakening the shields of enemies, hitting them with certain attacks, hitting them and collecting these orbs that let you use like powered up magical physical attacks and you have strategy between when you choose to use that and not to use it. The game is actually challenging. I have tied to a normal battle and a, maybe a boss battle or something, but this game is not a pushover. I'm playing on normal difficulty, which is nice. I like it when these RPGs are not like super straightforward, not a snooze fest. The music is amazing. The bat so one of the things I judge RPGs on these days are how good is the battle music? And the battle music in Sea of Stars is really good. Uh, it it's catchy, it's fun, the battle music seems to change between a lot of fights, so every fight has kind of got a little different beat for the boss music. Um, it's just, it's a really nice package altogether. The only thing that I'm not really feeling in this game right now is I don't feel too attached to the characters, I don't feel too into the story, I like the comedic value that they try and add with some of the side characters and uh, you know one of the main characters that you get in your party eventually. I don't want to spoil anything here for you, so this is very spoiler free. Uh, essentially, he, he's, they act as a comedic relief character, and it's kind of cool. I'm not really super into the story, but for me, an RPG, as long as it has the other things I've talked about, amazing music, amazing graphics, fun gameplay, not too long, not too short. Uh, I think the 20 to 25 hour range is like perfect for me, and that's kind of what this game is. I'm into it. I, I, I'm loving the game. I'm about five hours in as of making this video, and I plan on going back to it probably tomorrow. That's probably going to be the next game I stream. Uh, speaking of which, if you've made it this far into the video, appreciate it. If you haven't checked out my Twitch streams, I'm streaming all of these games on my Twitch, so you can stop them by. I got my link in the description. Uh, streaming Armor Core 6, Sea of Stars, Starfield, so if you want to see and ask me and find out my impressions in real time, feel free to stop by. But uh, Sea of Stars, can't wait to jump back in. I don't want it to be too long-winded here, but man, I have not felt this way about one of these classic style rpgs in a really long time it really outside of some of the modern day comedy and jokes that they kind of try and insert into here 
it really feels like this is a game that could have been on the PlayStation 1. Heck, even a really good looking PS2 pixel RPG. I mean, this is this is the real deal. Believe the hype. If you're a classic RPG turn-based fan and you have not played this game, take my word for it. It takes a lot to impress me when it comes to these pixel, you know, classic style wannabe games. I hate to call it like wannabe, but you know what I'm talking about. A game that wants to be Chrono Trigger or aspires to take inspiration from Chrono Trigger, I guess is a better way of putting it. That's very ambitious, but let me tell you, this game gets pretty close. It's it's a great game. So now, let's move on to the granddaddy of them all, the one that I'm sure a lot of you are here to hear about the most, and that is Starfield. Now let me tell you, I was so laid back about Starfield, I was like, man, I was, I'm not even sure if I'm going to get this game. Because the last time that they showed Starfield in like one of their presentations, Microsoft's presentations, before they showed the, the gameplay examples of like the things you can do in Starfield, I was like, man, I'm not sure I'm going to get Starfield. I don't know if I'm really in the mood for a sci-fi No Man's Sky Bethesda game right now. I kind of just want Elder Scrolls 6, you know what I mean? Like, just forget Starfield, give me Elder Scrolls 6. So when they showed the new gameplay from a couple months back where they're like oh you can build a ship you can farm you can do this you can do that you can build that there's all this micromanagement i'm like man this is too much this, what happened to just being a simple space exploration game there's space combat there's farming there's cooking there's i'm like man i can't deal with this that it, it's too much for me that this game looks like it's going to be just too much of a commitment too much to do it feels like it's trying to do too many different things but then i'm like you know what it's on Game Pass. Obviously, I'm going to try it for a day. I was going to try it for a day regardless, but I wasn't like super enthused about it, believe it or not. I played it day one. It starts off, I think the game looks stunning, honestly, on the Series X. I know a lot of people are kind of beating up on the game over the character faces. I get it. The game doesn't have the best character faces. I will tell you that we had some amazing laughs on screen, on my stream laughing about the characters and like their weird eye movements. I mean, there were some hilarious moments on the first night that I streamed this game. Um, but the, I think the environments look amazing. The lighting is just stunning. The way that they have this game rendered with the graphics engine, I think they did an excellent job. So let's let's just walk you through this a little bit. So the beginning of the game, the tutorial, I'm not super feeling it. I felt like this tutorial was like a little long-winded. Um, wasn't quite clicking for me. I made up my mind in the beginning that I was going to go for like a melee build. I'm not super feeling the melee. They give me like a dinky little axe and a little stabby dagger. Like it's nothing. And still, I haven't really gotten a good melee weapon. But, you know, I'm kind of like feeling my way through the game in the beginning. And I'm like, this is cool and all. But I'm like, mm, it's, you know, it seems all right. So... I go to the next planet that they expect me to go to, which is like this forested kind of place with some aliens dotted around. I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. It looks like a more modernized kind of no man's sky. And they're, they're like, all right, go here for your main mission. You need to talk to somebody over here. But I'm like, no, I want to see what happens in this game. What happens if I stray off the beaten path and ignore the main story from the get-go? So I just start wandering. I start walking and, uh, I, I, you know, scan some aliens, I kill some stuff, and then the game really clicked for me. The moment when I'm just out in the middle of nowhere, no idea where I am on this forest planet, and a pirate ship, I hear a pirate ship flying over my head, and it lands off in the distance. I'm like, wow, okay, uh, I'm, I guess this is some kind of like random prescripted event, so I head over to the pirate ship, and I raid their base, and there's a whole mini dungeon where they landed. I go in, and I'm in there for like an hour just killing space pirates, finding new equipment, finding health items, and my freaking word, let me tell you guys, this game is fun to explore. I'm scouring every inch of the environments in this game, because one of the things that I have enjoyed the most out of any Bethesda games is I love getting down into the nitty gritty and looking into these environments and, uh, you know, scouring every room, for every little nook and cranny for where they hide these items, looking at what does what, what, uh, what's worth the most money, what heals me for this, did I find an epic piece of gear, did I find a legendary, I just love looking around the shelves and on the floors and things that have fallen over and I look through all that stuff and I love finding and picking up every little thing that looks cool 
And man, does this game nail that because everything feels natural. These rooms feel lived in. They feel real. It's not like the older Bethesda games where everything is either on a shelf or in a box or in a case. There's stuff just laying around, some really good stuff that's just like tucked into a nook and cranny in the corner. You want to open that locked door that's on the other side of the dungeon? You better be looking on every table, every floor for that little itsy bitsy key that's just inconspicuously placed in the environment and I love that kind of stuff and these environments these dungeons feel labyrinth like and fun to explore I will say though early on the combat was a little hit or miss for me uh, a lot of the guns felt kind of meh the melee does not really feel that good I'm still waiting to get a better melee weapon because I did choose the, ch the chef archetype so I plan on doing a lot of cooking a lot of melee I want to just kind of like role play this like weird melee axe wielding uh cook knife wielding you know killer chef that cooks a lot of stuff so i thought that dungeon was awesome and i'm like okay all right let's continue on with the story so i go to where they want me to go and it, it brings me to uh what is it atlantis the main city in the game my freaking word like it gets better this game it it, it evoke i didn't expect it to evoke the feelings that i had the first time i had played uh, Morrowind or Oblivion or Skyrim. You know those moments where you get out of the tutorial and you go out into the open world and you see the vast expanse of space, or, you know, not, not space, but, you know, the Elder Scrolls games where you see the, the landscape, the trees, the hills, the mountains. This game has given me that feeling, despite it being procedurally generated in most of the planets. But when I went to this, this city area, it was huge. It was sprawling. The sense of scale was unparalleled in any game I've played before. And I couldn't get over how many NPCs there were. It felt like a, a living, breathing world. Yeah, the NPCs look silly. I get it. But exploring this environment, seeing the lighting, the time of day, the way the lights reflect off the trees and the buildings, and just how you can just walk into a store, have no loading, you know, go about... There is loading in these cities, unfortunately. They are gigantic. But it just felt like a real sci-fi city. It felt like... The Citadel or something from Mass Effect times a hundred. Um, it just was astonishing to walk through. I loved every second of it. There's a lot of characters and a lot of people to talk to, so I didn't do a lot of that on stream because it would bore people. There's a lot of side quests that you get involved in. There's so many different ways you can role play and go about these quests and talking to these characters. And uh, I didn't want to get like too involved in the city because I knew I wanted to explore more and see what else this game had to offer outside of that and just go to random cities and I mean random planets and everything. So that's what I did. I start visiting random planets and I'm like, let's just let's see what this game's about. Let's see if they advertise this the way that they, you know, meant to advertise it where you can just go anywhere, do anything, explore, do whatever you want. So the next day that I played the game, I did just that. That was what I did tonight. I'm like, I'm going to ignore the main story, because I'm going to be honest, I'm not really feeling the main story. It's not really my thing right now. It's kind of like a little, a little boring. So I just spent the whole day, the five and a half hours, just going to random planets. I'm like, all right, let's just pick this random planet off over here, and then I'm going to land on an island on this planet. And sure enough, that island has a mini dungeon and, and and it's inhabited by pirates and i go into a whole nother dungeon and this dungeon is a giant cavernous area that looks like it's like out of resident evil 8 or something and it's a giant place just killing these pirates the sense of scale once again is just amazing i'm finding new goodies i'm finding new legendary and epic gear to outfit my character and this whole time i don't even have to be doing this i could be out doing the main mission but i'm like i'm just doing whatever the heck i want and i love it i love every second of it and I, I jumped to an ice planet. Uh, this ice planet was pretty barren, but I'm finding like liquid mercury kind of dotted around the environment. And, you know, a, a thing that a lot of people are saying is the game feels barren and kind of empty. I love that. I love that every corner you turn in this game doesn't feel like you're playing Gears of War or Call of Duty. This game knows when to scale things back. If you're on a barren ice land in the middle of space, you're probably not going to be doing too much fighting. It's going to be pretty empty. But those moments when you do find something to fight, like a, par a pirate colony, or maybe in the future I'm going to like just stumble into an ice worm or something that just pops out of the ground, it's going to be really exciting. So as I'm on this ice planet, I just keep going. It's like, oh, there's a point of interest you know, all the way over here. It'll take you five minutes to walk there. So I run there, and it's just a, it's just a colonist hanging out, minding her own business, taking pictures of the planet. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to kill her. I killed her. 
<laughs> and she gave me 88 golds. And that was that. No one saw the murder. We went on about our day. Like, you just have the freedom to do whatever you want. Like, no one's gonna, no one's gonna know. Kill this person on this, some ice planet out in the solar system. There's no one to witness it. I can, you know, role play this murderous cooking melee axe wielding chef. It's so much fun. And I keep going around this ice planet, explore the ice caves. And there's some ice caves where there's no, you know, dungeons where there's no enemies. It's just resource gathering. And that's completely fine. Not everything needs to have encounters. Some planets are going to be a bit more desolate than others. Some planets, like one I went to, is this dark, smoky, gas-ridden planet with a bunch of these weird spider enemies. And I just went around there hacking up stuff, gaining some experience. And then I went to this guy's ship and he was preoccupied fighting the aliens and he goes walking off with like his alien dog after the combat was over he didn't know i was there and i went on and i hack i broke the lock and i stole his ship and then i went to you know another planet that is just this forested area that kind of looks like it could be earth that's inhabited by these giant alien t-rex dinosaur things uh i mean man what an absolute stunner of a game and i'm only scratching the surface i know there's so many more environments and planets out there to discover this game feels like no man's sky just ramped up to infinity this is what no man's sky wanted to be at the beginning i haven't played no man's sky since it's been updated so i can't comment on how it is now but this is what we all wanted no man's sky to be from the beginning except it has even more polish in terms of like a fleshed out sort of triple a experience this is a very this is the most unbuggy non-broken Bethesda game I think I played in a very long time. I gotta hand it to them. There's been very little problems in the 11-ish hours that I've played it so far. And, uh, man, this game's special. If you're holding off on playing it because you're just too busy with other games right now, you're making the right choice, this game is gonna command all of your time, all of your mental capacity. I mean, you are gonna get fully absorbed in this experience, and uh, I'm loving, you know, every second of it. It's not perfect, there's a lot of weird quirks with the UI that I'm not a fan of with like how you have to select items and the solar system stuff. I mean, I haven't even touched on the flight and the solar system part of this game with the space combat. The only thing I'll say about space combat is it feels weighty. It feels better than I thought it would. It doesn't feel like you're playing like a Star Wars Episode One Naboo Starfighter game where everything's like zipping around like crazy. I mean, it is weight. It feels slow. It feels good. I haven't done any ship building because I feel like that would overwhelm me right now. I'm trying to take it one step at a time. Apparently, people love the ship building part. Uh, the solar system navigation is probably my least favorite part of the game. I think there's too much fast travel. There's too much like stuff going on with the solar system navigation that isn't just like you flying your ship for my taste. Um, the only other thing I'll say is that I've started to collect. Uh, at first, I started collecting all the little succulent plants in the game, the ones in the potted plants, and I was putting them into my ship, but then I found out that this game doesn't really have a good way of rotating items when you go to place them, so they were always falling over on my ship. So then I started moving on to collecting all the plushies in the game, and so far I have three plushies, and I'm just, like, throwing them in my ship. And you can do fun, crazy stuff like that. I haven't done any outposting yet, so I haven't set up any bases um, to harvest minerals or, like, set up a home or anything, but, man, uh, it's good. It's, it's really good. I'd say if I had to give it like a number as of where I'm at right now, I don't want to review this game, but just to give you a sense of where my mind is at, this is like a solid 9 out of 10 kind of game. 10 out of 10, it's not perfect. There's a lot of things, like I said, I'm kind of like nitpicking about on the game to, to be kind of a 10 out of 10. But uh, man, if you haven't played it yet, enjoy, take your time. You're going to have a way different experience from everybody else. And just play it however you want. If you want to ignore the main quest and just go explore for an entire day like I did, go do it. And uh, oh, the skill trees and all the stuff you can level up, man, it's just... It's its like one of the perfect Western RPGs. If you're a fan of any of Bethesda's past Fallout, uh, Elder Scrolls games, any open world games in general, I mean, this is a must play. If you're not playing it and you like, if you fall into any of those categories, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, sort of a, a three-in-one. Hope you guys have been enjoying the uploads I've been doing lately. As always, if you've made it to the end of the video, be sure to leave it a like. Let me know that you know, you're, know first of all, making it to the end of the video and enjoying it. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these three games. Uh, there's so many other games, too, coming out this month. Man, it's going to be it's gonna be crazy. So, anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Uh, I did this whole thing unedited off the top of my head. No notes or anything, so... That's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.